Boom, and we are live. Episode 74 of the Brown Water Banter Podcast. I am Jared Seymour. My name is Joey Case. I think we got it right out the gate this time. Yep. Uh, on the podcast today, we have uh, Jordan and Eric. We're going to talk all things PPP. That's Triple P. That's the uh, Payroll protection program i got it all I'm right glad you got that. yeah i tried i tried my best uh but yeah we're going to talk about all the updates we had these guys on before uh episode what do you think it was 30s 40s 40s Long something time. like that yeah. it was through the internet it was why uh, covid still had us all shut down and we yeah. had to do everything through zoom we were thankful for it but it's way better to be in a studio talking to these guys we're going to talk about the uh the updates but i want to try to get like a good overall picture because you know, a Neanderthal like me, I can't understand all of it completely. So to have you two professionals here to kind of walk us head. through it and hopefully all the viewers here listening and, uh, and watching, we'll be able to figure it all out. So uh, before we jump into it, though, like we always do, we want to thank our sponsor. That's Dr. Robbie Williams. Let me flash his, uh, his stuff up here on the he's screen. He's a good looking guy. Yeah, he's a good looking gent. Uh, he's a big supporter of the show, man. Southern Magnolia Smiles. They're located right here in Ocean Springs on Washington Avenue. You can go check him out. Uh, he's been a supporter of the show since very, very early on. Actually was a guest on the show. We like to mention that too, one of the early episodes. So go uh, Easter egg and find that one. Um, you can check him out at his website uh, at uh, www.southernmagnoliasmiles.com. You can call him on the old school phone, uh, the rotary dial there at 228-215-1202. And he is on all the social platforms at Southern Magnolia Smiles. So that's it. Yeah, we're very ha happy to have him support the show. So gentlemen, how are y'all doing today? First of all, loving it. Have yes, a great good. time. Love the new studio. Oh, thank you, Thanks, man. Thank man. you. Thank y'all for taking the time to come out today and uh, talk about a very important topic to a lot of people, right? Uh, COVID sucked. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Absolutely. Yep. And it took uh, it took lives. It took uh, people's control of their business out of their hand. I mean, it, it uh, you know, I don't have to overstate how bad it was. I mean, at this point, we all know what it was. I don't remember the date of when we talked the first time, but I kind of feel like we didn't know where everything was going, mm. you know, completely as well as we do now. Yeah, it's very sure. early in the process. Yeah. It, it was, it was. And so now everybody's very familiar with what it did. Uh, and I think we're going to be seeing the ramifications economically from this for what, a, a while? Yeah. It's not over yeah. with, right? No, no, no. Not even close. And so, uh, so what what is a good place to start with all this like with this conversation i think y'all know better than sure. i know, for I'll, sure i'll just go back and do a pretty quick overview just yes, of the program real absolutely quick. Yeah. absolutely um, back when this started COVID hit probably in march and then the government uh rolled out this paycheck protection program to kind of help business owners keep their employees on in addition to this employment uh stimulus that they were doing as well they rolled this program out but it was so big that the government can do it themselves. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, so SBA <laughs> learned, they said, hey, look, we, we got all these people who need this money. We don't have the manpower to do it. So we're going to partner up with all the banks across the country and say, hey, we're going to empower you to do these loans, get this money out there. We want to make it to the point so that it's forgivable loans and they don't have to pay it back. So they set these things up. If you were already in game with SBA, meaning you were a preferred lender, you were already in the game with them to help do this. If not, they made a program so that you could become one of their uh, preferred lenders. And so we've rolled that out. Uh, our bank, bank, I work for Bancorp South. We've done plug <laughs> <laughs> several it. million dollars yeah. of loans yeah. but, uh, and gotten thousands and thousands of applications out there for these small business owners to help them at, stay alive, stay afloat, help pay for first and foremost their pay, payroll to keep their employees on board. They didn't want to have in, these business owners having to fire their employees. Yeah. Right. Just they, because they're not open, down, right? right? Yeah. They're not doing, open. So how are you going to continue to make payroll? It's not their fault. So right. why right. are you going to penalize them and have them fire their employees? Correct. So they rolled this out to kind of help them keep their employees on. Um, since that time, since we've come on, they've rolled out a second round of that to help uh, certain businesses get another round of PPP money because this thing has just dragged on. We're coming up on almost a year anniversary since really everything got shut down. I remember the last event we had was March 17th. So, I mean, we're, we're right there. We're right, right at that one year anniversary. Yeah. So, so to like, just to recap real quick, right out of the gate that we, everybody knows they did stimuluses for the individual, but then this was separate for the businesses, right? Correct. Do Correct. you feel like the people that applied on that first round of stimulus did 
did the majority get approved? Did it was it was it a, a lot, a little? Like was there way more demand the than there was part, supply? Yes. How, how did that work? Demand out the gate was tremendous. Correct. I mean, it, pretty much everybody. We everybody were, around we were overloaded. Uh, us and all the other local banks were just inundated with questions and comments and concerns about okay, what do I do? How do I apply? How much do I get? All of these questions. I had to set up a mailing list to kind of ease the tension and answer the same questions over and over. So I was sending information out. Well, I'll never forget the first day we did this was on Good Friday last year, 2020. Yeah. Uh, we had all these applications kind of just piling up and, and we were waiting with our online vendor to kind of put all the applications in. It was a Friday, Good Friday. We stayed after after hours. I think my first application, I look back, was 6.30 p.m. And then we uploaded applications all the way up to 11.30 p.m. that Holy night mother. for all these small business owners to make sure that, A, they got in line because that money mm -hmm. went quick right. the first time. It went very quick. Right Now, the second round applications, there's actually still money out there, mm -hmm. but the qualifications are a little bit different. And I'll kind of go into that a little bit later, but... Right out of the gate, it was fast and furious. Yeah, again, yeah, and that and that went super quick, yeah. very quick. Yeah. yeah, they even they supplemented it a little on in the process. Then they put a little more money into the original PPP so that more people could right. get loans. <clears throat> but another thing you saw too was there was so much confusion. Right. Everybody right involved. Out of the gate. That, yeah. I mean, we had people sending money back. You know, they got funded and sending money back. Oh, I don't know if I really need. There was there was so much confusion that a lot of people that should have gotten help didn't get help. And, and I mean that you can still apply for that original PPP now. Do, do you yeah. think that that was the government's fault? Yeah, by the way, they was rushed. They, well, they probably had to be yeah, rushed, probably, but, yeah. but typically yeah. like, even like with the Obamacare stuff, I remember when that tried to roll out the, uh, the websites crashed and all that yeah. stuff. And it's like, cause th that's really not the government's game. You know, that's not, I don't know what their specialty is, but it's not that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not so ending business. money. <laughs> yeah, and nor should it be, right? right. But but so uh, was it was it a situation like that, or was it just that complex? And and again, everybody's in chaos. This is kind of unprecedented. A little bit of everything. I think it was a little bit of everything. Um, yeah, I don't fully fault them because I mean, like you said, they're, they're just trying to get money get it out. out. Yeah, I mean, help these people survive. Right. Yeah. So, I, but, but then also too. Uh, where you get your information source from too, because I, I mean, the majority of the, the calls that I fe fielded was, were them asking something that they saw on Facebook or, you know, they heard from this and that, and it, but people were just throwing information out there in the beginning yeah. And, yeah. and nobody really knew what was going on. So that complicated the process. Right. Yeah. I want to bring up a point real quick too, before we get in there, you, you, you know, you're a personal CPA, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you work for Bank of South, as you mentioned. Yeah. Doing all this work, I don't. I'm not so much f familiar on your end, but I know on your end, mm -hmm. a bank lends money, and that's how y'all. One of the ways that y'all make money, that's right? Right. But this did not fall under in that wheelhouse, correct? This is not correct. Okay, but, so y'all are doing all this to help your customers because you care, absolutely, and because right. it was a tragic time, right? And like you said, a mailing list that you made. I mean, that's that's no, nope, you didn't have to do that, right? Right. 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 Now, SBA did incentivize to, us to do that. And that was part of the program is they, they gave a certain percentage of whatever the loan amounts were for us to service these loans. So okay. uh, they did give us some sort and that's of good. financial that's a good incentive thing. to yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. do yeah. that. Little, it's a lot of work. Well, gotta pay, right. You got to pay your employees for yeah. servicing these loans and you got a lot of back office work, paperwork, all this stuff. So yeah, they did incentivize us to do that. As the loans got bigger, that percentage got smaller, but for the smaller <laughs> loans, I think it's it's out there. It's five percent for loans all the way up to one fifth hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. One fifty to two million, it was three percent. And then above two million, it was one percent. And that's just a percentage of whatever the loan amount was, was the fee that the bank got. And the thing was we didn't get the money until the loans were actually forgiven. So oh, we had to wait a yeah. long time before we actually got the money. That sounds like an insurance reimbursement. Yeah. Is what that sounds like. <laughs> if you do this, just we did yeah. all these loans in April twenty twenty. Forgiveness did not start until November of twenty twenty. And we're still going through it right now. And they're making yeah. changes as we speak. Wow. Okay. So where are we at in this part of the story again? Because I am a layman. So you yeah. help keep me on track. Are we to the qualification point in the story? Where should we pick back up? Well, right it, now, um, we're we're in the middle of two two or three phases of it. We're, we're in round two where certain customers can apply and get a second PPP loan, even if they got the first one, even if it's not forgiven. But if they've used that money and they can prove that they use that money, they can go get a second loan. Okay. And it can be forgiven. Now, mm -hmm. they, there's some qualifications behind that. You have to 
prove that you have suffered a revenue reduction, 25%. And that can be in any quarter from 2019 to 2020 or for the year. So they just have to show, hey, 2020 sucked. I, I actually did worse than I did in 2019. Now, for those businesses that actually did well. And there are some and, of those. There's yeah. a lot of those. Yeah, yeah. a lot that. of those. Yeah. Didn't qualify for the second round. I can give you one, for example, auto dealers. They did incredible in 2020. Yeah. They can't keep cars on the lot. Yeah, so I've heard that. Can't get used cars. Right. Yes, They're selling everything. Absolutely. Again. So get, certain industries are doing very well. But for the most part, the ones that really need it, your bars, your restaurants, right. your but but then, but then certain businesses. bars maybe not right because if you could sell anything to go maybe not so much in Mississippi but I'm sure. talking nationwide they yeah. did way better yeah. right? absolutely there was nothing to do but <laughs> drink <laughs> drink yeah you know like, oh, like your liquor stores are doing incredible. I bet liquor stores are doing they're doing great, great. Yeah, yeah exactly and like you like we got Buffalo Trace right here in yeah. Maker's Mark I mean some of the Buffalo find you can't find can't it dude it. I was like I, I, this is making me feel uncomfortable <laughs> here. I don't like this situation. it's twenty eight bucks and you can't find yeah. it yeah exactly if I can't get liquor or I'm mad. Yeah. Both right now are a yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. What is this? Yeah. This is America. Yeah. yeah. Really. But for round two, it's the revenue reduction was the big kicker. And now you can still qualify for the same amount that you did in round one. You could still use 2019 numbers, which is good because a yeah. lot of people, a lot of people are lost. Their employee yeah. counts, their payroll, all that stuff were down in 2020. So we can default back to 2019. On the other aspect, a lot of people who got that loan back in April and May are now trying to get those loans forgiven. So you're going through that process and SBA has been tweaking it since they rolled this out in October. What was the difference between qualifying the first round and this round? The revenue reduction. Okay. So That's first big first round you didn't didn't need, matter. If, if you, you were a were business a and you had employees and you could show a need, you get it. Okay. So it was basically so any first small come, business. first serve, pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah. yeah. If that you were less than five hundred employees certain revenue uh caps, but other than that, I will kind of default to Jordan. They dropped the, the if I'm not, can you correct me if I'm wrong, but they dropped the employee number too. I think now they it's did. 300. It 300. Yeah. But Where on the was, first round, yeah, it was, it was 500. 500. Yeah, okay. Now you have to have no more than 300 employees. Okay. So th is that, is that them trying to target smaller businesses? Absolutely. Is that, is that what the yeah. theory is behind mm -hmm. that? 500 is okay. a lot of people. Yeah. Cause I mean, oh, absolutely. Work, you know, yeah. the stories you heard coming out of this were the, the Lakers getting a $10 million. Oh, right. Yeah. Bruce Chris. Getting yeah. A yeah. I mean, that's what you Like heard. they need it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, shit, I don't know. It's such a I weird, guess everybody that's why it's it, so yeah. weird to like, when you get into this territory, it's like when the government starts deciding this and that versus right. them and this business, that's mm -hmm. what, you know. But when you hear someone like Ruth's Chris or, or like McDonald's or somebody like that, there's a franchisee owners. Correct. Yeah. That yeah. own a lot of these businesses that, hey, they're a small business owner and they maybe own Correct. one or two right. restaurants. That's and, not the case down here with McDonald's, but I mean, in other places, yes. But they are a true small business and the big corporate company just taxes them. Right. Correct. They franchise fees, fees right? Franchise yeah. fees. Did they pause those? But it's like, still a you know small business community owner who is in the community who mm -hmm. owns that business yeah mm -hmm. that's right okay so that's the difference between qualifying round one qualifying round two right what about forgiveness on round one forgiveness has been a moving target oh since that October. that makes everything so, yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah now they've made it easier but the problem is you've got three different forms out there yes you've got an s form you've got a regular form you got an easy form which one sounds the easiest? The easy form. The easy. I got to not. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the S form. That's what I second So guess. it's crazy. Yeah. Jesus hey, Christ. Yeah, that's our government for you. It doesn't make Damn. sense. So, yeah. But the S means simplified. And so just for layman's terms. And so that's <laughs> the one. Why easy. not call it that? <laughs> right. What's the other one? I don't know. Why would you one? not call it that? It's the regular. For, it's a 3508 regular at 3508 S and 3508 easy. Yeah. They're all okay. apply in certain situations and it's contact well, your banker and your CPA. Well, that was my next question. Like, do you, <laughs> don't do this don't on your try own. try to do it on your own. <laughs> if you do, you're probably going to get it wrong and you, you might yeah. end up owing the money. So contact yeah. your banker, contact your CPA. Which kind of leads into the, you know, the CPA's role in all this. And, and that's a good point too. Yeah, I'm yeah, right. thinking, what's the difference here between bank and CPA? Yeah. So Eric and I spent a lot of time on the phone. Over Absolutely. Last year. Yeah. I bet. <laughs> We've been great uh, resources for each other. That's good, yeah, man. So, so, I mean, our role is to, to basically act as, I guess, quote unquote agents for the, the applicant. Right. Because, I mean, hey, look, you're small business. You're worried. You know, you, you run a nail salon. You're worried about making money paying nails. You don't right. want to deal with all this. So, right. yeah. we would accumulate and file the application for these individuals. And then because 
Eric and like I said, we talk all the time. I know what he needs. He can call me. He yeah. knows he's got it. That you know, fifteen minutes. That's right. Y'all know what needs to go on the phone. We know right. what needs to out. go in the file, right. and they have the information. So why deal with these small business owners who a don't know what they need, right? B don't understand the program. I can default to Jordan and say, Hey, I need this, this, and this, or have this customer do this, this, and this, and it you makes it a it. whole yeah. lot easier. You don't get an application, get bounced back four or five times right. before it goes yeah. through. And we want to make yeah. sure we're getting that money to the customers as quickly as possible because they need it. We know they do. Absolutely. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, that doesn't sound. But as far as forgiveness, all I'd say is just contact your whoever you're dealing with because that's going to be the easiest thing. To, they've made it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. You don't have to provide as much documentation as you did on the front end. So they're they're trying. Are they doing it as quickly and as easy as possible? No, negative. but let me, ask, let me, let me ask it yeah. this way. Then what was the intent? Was the intent for forgiveness to be based on that? You actually spent it on the employee. Correct. Okay. Cause that, that's the, right. the, the macro goal here, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And All so right. that was the documentation you were having to provide is to show, Hey, I did in, indeed spend this money on employees. I used it on payroll. I used it on this, this, and this. And I'll, I'll tell you about 95% of my customers, the entire documentation was all payroll. Nothing yeah, else. Yeah. Is that it didn't even apply to anything else. And that worked. That's exactly what we wanted what to do. What it's supposed to do. Yeah. That's what it's supposed How, to do. Why that happened was, and like we talked about it changing every second, was about midway through the summer, I think it was, they came out with a, an extension. You know, originally it was you had this eight week period to right. spend this money. Okay. And if you, you know, anything outside of that period didn't qualify, well, they realized, you know, this thing's going on a little bit longer than we thought it was <laughs> yeah. going to go on. So, they extended that eight week period to a 24 week period. Yeah. Well, every, every one of the calculations are based on the eight, eight week weeks, period. Yeah. So now you have a ton of expenses that have cover that covered period. Right. So you could end up doing it all on payroll and, and only have to provide support for your payroll expenses. So th that's where the confusion comes in. Yeah. That's okay. one of them. And that's yeah. what y'all have to sift through. And figure yeah. Out. Yeah. That, 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 that was the, Big and then just the changing of the forms, and then, like I said, the fear of when you did have those Laker right. issues. And the re then you heard people say, Oh, well, you can get prosecuted if you didn't need yeah. this money. You get well, people, you know, people yeah. down here, like, Oh, let's do send I get it? it? Do I qualify? Yeah. Or, yeah. I don't send, even want to send that shit back, man. Yeah. 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 Send it to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. give you an example. I got an uncle up in Virginia, and he has been paralyzed by this program and did not want to apply for the payroll protection program for the fear that he was going to get stuck with it and not have to pay it back. Well, about a month and a half ago, I added him to my little mailing list and said, hey, I'll keep you updated on all the stuff that's going on. And he finally said, this all makes sense. OK, I, I can apply mm -hmm. for it. I, I'm not on the hook for all this. Uh Thank yeah. you. You're, you're providing the information that puts me at ease. That you've cleared yeah. it up and made yeah. me feel well. a little bit better about what's going on. And thankfully, a lot of other people are finally realizing, hey, this is not as bad as it seems. Mm -hmm. We can get this forgiven. I'm not going to owe this money back. Maybe I should look into this. Well, yeah. it's it's a uh, clear uh, example of like why communication is so important and why big companies have PR teams and communications departments, because once the waters get muddied, it's super it's hard. Tough, yeah. to, and social media mm -hmm. is going to do muddy everything, even if you do a a great job of explaining oh, it right out the gate and absolutely. nothing changes. So then you factor in that it's the government. It was a fluid situation with everything moving back and forth. Social media layered on top of that. Like you said, the average Joe consumer, he's just wanting to paint nails or whatever their business is. Yeah. They don't want to have to have a, you know, a, a degree in finance. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So they kick it to you guys. And I could see that man, the average small business owner being like, yeah, I don't want this money, you know, cause I don't know how it's going yeah, to play out to pay it back. Yeah. Right. With some crazy interest rate. Yeah. Right. And then, and then there were. Well, well prosecution, though. I, like yeah, you yeah, mentioned. Yeah, Eric, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. They, the interest rate, they're, they're thinking like, they're going to come after me, man. No, 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 I don't want to be liable. I don't want them coming after right. my business. Yeah. And I want you've already spent it, too, out. right? Because yeah. that was the kicker. They didn't just get to ha hold on to this money. No, they had, had to do it eight weeks. You had right? to spend, yeah. had to spend yeah. the money. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. that is that's a tough situation. Yeah. And like you like you said, too, just the, I mean, if I can say anything in this is be choosy of where you get your information from. Oh, absolutely. The professionals would be yeah. the, the correct yeah. answer, he right? He said, yeah. she said. Well, that, yeah. even within the professional world, I had other bankers giving bad information yes. and other accountants who were deferring to me because they knew nothing about what was going on. So yeah. even within our arenas, 
you had to find the people who knew what they were talking about. Now, when you say understood, when you say other bankers doing that, was that because they willfully just didn't like, like ego didn't want to say they didn't know, or they, they were just blatantly ignorant and didn't take the time to look into it because they didn't think it applied to them yeah. or it didn't apply to their customer base, and so they were just like, ah, oh, this isn't something I need to worry about. But then, then spoke as a representative of that industry. Absolutely. I mean, when you when you're in an industry, I won't and you speak talk, of names. But I wouldn't yeah. ask. I wouldn't ask either. But yeah, yeah that, I mean, that's that's not good. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and and I mean, too, to to some, you know, to less than some of the burden, the, the information flow was terrible. Right. So, right. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, like I said, and then people run to to Facebook. I mean, I had my wife, and this is after a week <laughs> of me reading this bill, calling Eric. Hey, did you read this in the bill? Looking we read up, the bill the night yeah, it came out on grammar, making seeing if a comma did this comma make this sense mean right I mean, yeah absolutely for hours. <laughs> absolutely i get home and, and i say something about it my wife tells me no oh, on facebook i read you know i said look don't even <laughs> i'm not sure me. that's a credible <laughs> yeah. source yeah. 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 oh it's on facebook I, I was wrong all along all yeah right. my bad <laughs> facebook uh makes wikipedia look like it like, <laughs> yeah. like the dictionary the yeah. webster's yeah, yeah, that's right. Right. aunt that's susan's right. right i know yeah. Aunt yeah. Susan's right. Yeah. Yeah. it's like aunt susan can't balance her checkbook yeah. you're gonna tell you're gonna take advice from her she knows this loan situation I don't know. You know, Mark Zuckerberg said, yeah. no. did you read those comments? Those comments told me this, yeah. this, yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But to emphasize something that Eric said that, that for those small businesses that are out there right now that were scared or didn't apply or, you know, you know, sent the money back, you know, that to know that the, this is, they're still there. They can go yeah, back and get the money it's out there. still there. So I put in two applications today. Now, um, would that be like, the first round or no that that round is one done. of them is round one uh, yeah, I, round one and round two are still applicable today if you didn't apply for a ppp loan you can still get a round one loan absolutely. Now that's valuable information right there yes yeah. and okay. and if you have gotten a round one and you can still prove that you lost money or had that revenue reduction you can still get a round two yep. today that okay. money's still out there there's about back to back 30 percent of the allocated funding and this recent america rescue plan act has allocated more money to the PPP program. Damn. So, and that just got passed. Y'all got them forms with y'all? <laughs> right. I got a little bit of it here. The good news is too, and that's what another thing I want to touch on, it's almost completely digitalized. Now, depending upon the, yes. the banker that you use, they've made it so easy to go it's on. No, and, and there's no paper forms yeah, at it, all. It, you just go so everything's in, online. Absolutely. I can load an application for you in less than 10 minutes. Yeah. And you can be approved in under 24 hours. Okay. If, if it gets to SBA, under that time frame, just depending on them, they have made the process a little bit longer because they're trying to check for fraud. There's a Correct. lot of fraud out there. Oh, yeah. Imagine, yeah. I mean, we heard oh, everything. People, oh, yeah. people in jail were getting stimulus. There checks. are rings. Yeah. There are rings going around where they are setting up these fake tax pr preparation services. Yes, in conjunction with these fake businesses and providing fake tax returns to Absolutely. banks. Absolutely. Say that one more time. They're so they're they're creating they're, a they're mythical create, business to get correct. Yeah. Well, no, these are legit businesses that may have quote just opened up. So you have to be a legit business in order to apply. We have a a software that we're checking if you're an actual legit business. You have to be registered with the Secretary, Secretary of State. State. Correct. If you're not, you're kicked out automatically. Okay. Correct. So you have to be a quote legit business. Now, when you were in business. As long as you're in business that day, it doesn't matter. Okay. But so, you had to, but the first round, you didn't have to prove loss of revenue, correct? Correct. But you still had to prove that you were a business in yeah. business at that time. And is that, and when you say that, I get, I get the Secretary of State thing, but is that sales generation? Do you have to show a tax return from you have the to previous show your year? tax return from 2019, depending on the type of business you are. I got you. Right. For sole proprietors, it would be your Schedule C on your personal tax return. If it's your own separate business, it would be an 1120S, 1120, whatever your business tax Type return is. is. Okay. Yeah. And whatever your payroll, your wages, whatever you're paying towards your employees, that's the eligible amount. Mm -hmm. Got you. So okay. it all, it all depends that, that, on That the drives it home right there for, yeah. for me. And it's complicated right. because the way we calculate it is about a dozen different ways, just depending on what kind of business you are. And that's the whole problem with the Paycheck Protection Program. It's a, it's a one-size-fits-all box for every business in yeah. America. And that doesn't work. No. Because there's so many different types of businesses. Right. Correct. And then you get nonprofits like the chamber that I'm the president of. They weren't eligible the first go around. They are eligible now since they made changes to it. Okay. And they got a PPP loan. So okay. the rules are changing every day. So even if you don't think you were eligible before, you might be eligible now. You just don't know it. And you may not have followed the news to see that you were eligible. Yeah. So okay. I just heard about the second rollout of this like two days ago and how long yeah. has it been out 
when did they pass um right around christmas yeah right yeah around see around i, I just heard about the second roll out of the check. I was I was on webinars over Christmas break. Yeah. And that's important too to like Eric said it, it, to always check back like for instance and we see it a lot down here because we have a lot of small sole proprietor business owners that you know look the goal for a, a, a CPA is to legitimately you know I'm not right. skirting the rules right. but right. try to get your taxable income down correct yeah. well there are a lot of these small businesses that with you know other non-cash expenses like depreciation stuff like that they showed a loss well because you showed a loss on your schedule c in that first round you weren't getting any money well now they've changed it and now it's based on gross receipts it's not on revenue not, not, not on income. revenue i feel like i'm in accounting again yeah. that was not my strong suit yeah. <laughs> i'm Here, just shaking my head i'm like this i'm like ball. are we making money or not what's yeah, accounts receivable yeah. and taxable i don't know yeah. but how much money did i get here's the nuts and bolts before it was made on your your net income what you took home now if you're a sole proprietor it's your gross revenue before now that expenses. okay now i do understand that yeah. that's the big difference okay now they take if you have employees they take some other stuff out but that's the big change yes. that they've made recently right. for a sole proprietor is hey it's not your take-home money it's how much revenue you're generating and that's a big stretch absolutely big difference for a lot of sole proprietors out there who may have previously just thought eh, it's not worth it i only made like five thousand dollars before or in jordan's case the guy's saying I, I had a loss so i wasn't eligible before well guess what you round two you are round, now you are, now you are. Okay. So let's get that money. Get yeah. that money. It's still out there. <laughs> now, March 31st is the deadline. Yeah. For the uh, it's currently. Up. Currently. Now. Is that yeah. something they could punt down the road? They, possibly? they could definitely. Absolutely. They've extended it before. They could extend it again. Probably a good. So who knows? Yeah. If uh, Two questions. That made me think of another one. So if, if let, let me start here. If you're one of the millions of people that listen to this show, where do you millions. start if you haven't, uh, if you're not in the game right now? Right. You're hearing this and you're like, holy shit. Okay. I understand there's a round one and maybe I didn't qualify for that then, or maybe I do now, or maybe I didn't know about it. Or I hear about round two and the deadline's coming up. We're recording this on March the 12th. You're saying it's the 30th, the 31st, 31st. The okay. Yeah. So what, what, do, what's step one, what do they need to do? I would say your step one, if you have a, if you do have a CPA and I'm not shameless plug here, but if you have a CPA, reach out shameless to plug. the CPA. I like the plug. Hit the plug. Hit the plug. No, yeah, I get it. Agree. Where yeah. do they go to find you? Yeah. Pilts, Williams, LaRosa and company. Absolutely. But, there it is. Absolutely. But reach out to your CPA or, or, you know, whoever you have hand on it. Because like I said, the avenue there, A, they've dealt with it. They've probably done it a thousand times up to this point now, but then they can point you in the right direction. Um, and then also second place is, is your bank. I mean, I, I don't push anybody to any different banks. Go to the bank you're banking with. And I completely it, agree. I mean, go to your banker, whoever you're dealing with. I, if you want to deal with me, great. But I defer you to go to your own bank. Okay. Who knows you, who has right. your accounts, who can get your application processed as quickly as possible. Real quick too. How would someone join that email list that you mentioned before if they want to get some of your your stuff that you're putting out? Uh, yeah, absolutely. They can direct message you at, on your Facebook yeah, page, that's true. or if they want to email me, I can share my email address out when it's going out after this podcast. And okay, you can, can say it now unless you just don't want to say it now. I don't know uh, how it's that Eric. goes. Eric.Sievers at bxs.com, but my last name's spelled a little bit weird, so it may be easier to just put it out on print. Yeah, we'll put <laughs> it up. We can drop it in the comments we'll below put it up too. There. Uh, yeah. Sure, we can definitely do that. But yeah, okay. And then so I'm trying to think here. The other question that I had was how does this affect um we we're talking about businesses, you know, as a whole, but also LLCs, right? And then what the way this right. is going to affect personal income taxes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also hearing through the Facebook land, which we've already established as a super credible <laughs> super <laughs> source yeah, of information. Right. Work cited. Are they kicking out the deadlines for LLC deadlines, personal taxes deadlines, neither or both, or we don't know. We don't know. Okay. Um, I like that answer. Th yeah. There is a push to extend the deadlines. Um, and, and we saw this last year and they waited to the last minute and then they well, March 15th is the deadline, correct? For business, for businesses. Yeah. Correct. So, so yeah, we've, we've, we've Monday will be past that, but there's been talk of extension of the tax deadline really not necessarily due to this program but all of the other tax uh changes that they've passed in this new act um and, and then you know giving people time they say with the pandemic still to get out right. and face so you know the the mscpa which is the state society of cpas they're they're lobbying 
uh, to have it extended. Um, and a lot of the AICPA is the national organization. They're all lobbying. Now, I, do I think they'll do it? I'm not sure. I don't know. We've seen some extensions with uh, like Texas has got an extension already for the storm that they had, the ice. Right. So ice storm. We're right. seeing some of that, but right now it's kind of 50-50. Um, and part of that is part of the reason why I, yeah, I'm seeing where we may need it is one of the changes that were made. You know, originally the PPP funds, uh, you know, receipt of it was not taxable. Okay. But in, originally they said, well, that, you know, it's not taxable, but then you can't deduct any of the expenses that you use to qualify with. So in and of itself, they're making it taxable because right. you're losing right. that, the, the expense. Six in one hand, half dozen. Yeah. Hand. Right. Now okay. that change that i get they came out <laughs> congress came out and said no that's not how we want it to do you you it's not taxable and you still get to deduct your expenses so those type of changes make extending the deadline seem a little more logical right you're seeing it too right now the same exact thing happened with all of this uh the the i can't even remember the name of the grant program but it was a mississippi grant program and basically if you were a registered business in the state of Mississippi. They just sent you two thousand dollars. That's right. Yeah, I think we applied for that. Yeah, we, well, you, we may have, but we didn't get it. I can yeah, tell you we that. actually we didn't get, get shit. I can tell you yeah. that. <laughs> but, but it's going through the same process that for state PPP, taxes. Yeah. yeah, that the PPP yeah. went through right now. Whereas right now it's taxable, uh, but they, there's a bill in state legislature to make it non-taxable. Right. Well, you know, we're not going to file our tax. So it, that's kind of the confusion of why they're calling for this extension of tax season it seems to me like you need it i mean yeah. just for y'all i'm mean, y'all are probably pulling y'all's hair out right now uh, yeah y'all yeah, don't know what's yeah. going on yeah yeah it's crazy uh, all the, the loopholes and red tape and Absolutely. everything else well, like and that. then all of the stuff i mean the, the changes that have just come out with the i mean this is a big thing that a lot of listeners are probably going to care about unemployment they've come right. basically come out now and said up to ten thousand two hundred dollars of your unemployment is non-taxable whereas unemployment you know, money. Damn, it, it goes it's always taxable. It goes yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so I've, I have a couple of returns that I've already filed that I, <laughs> I, I got to go back and amend. I see the guy who didn't take the taxes out of his unemployment hearing this, and he's like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> screw <laughs> y'all! Y'all all said I was stupid, <laughs> and I do. Yeah. I got rims on my car and all this shit, and y'all <laughs> told me I was stupid. You yeah, know what exactly. yeah. exactly. yeah. I might have been stupid. I don't know. I'm just kidding. You know, a lot of that's a joke, but a lot of people did need it, and it was a terrible time. And the thing that I, I I don't know how y'all guys lean, but like you know, government and whether you're conservative or more liberal or whatever, when it comes to at least economics, right? This was different because, and I mentioned at the beginning of the show, it took it took the uh, the ability for a a business owner to make money out of their hands completely. There was no more free market in the sense of, well, your business sucked and that's why you failed. It was like everybody shut down and you You can't can't do do this, right? It's the first time in history of America that that has ever happened. Absolutely. So to to make the joke about the unemployment is just for shits and giggles, but there was a lot of people that really need that money and it did help out a lot of families, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 um, when you when you say that made me think of something else don't don't just limit yourself as a small business to just the pay, paycheck protection program because that's not the only program out there right go on I, and i i won't even begin to get into the There's details of, of all mail? these well yeah. i'm sharing that in my mailing list that we, see there we go there we, gotta get that. we gotta get that in that comment there. section yeah but i try mm. to tell these people i'm not involved with it yeah. <laughs> they keep thinking I'm, I'm running all these shows and most of them is it not through the sba these other most programs? of them are through the sba oh shit so it is yeah okay. okay there's grants out there there's there's Employee retention credit's a big one. See, and, and in the beginning of all of this too, I guess you know nobody knew how widespread it was going to be, what the real economic impact was going to be. Correct. So they they would pigeonhole people. You know, if you get the PPP money, then you can't do any other right. program, and you can't do that. Well, now they're coming back and say, look, hey, it's a free <laughs> wide yeah. open. Damn. I mean, the only stipulation is, you know, for instance, on the employee retention credit, um, and you have to look into the, the details of it, but you basically get money back for the number of employees that you keep okay. on, on payroll. Um, well, you can't, you, you, in the beginning, you just couldn't get, if you applied for PPP, you couldn't apply for the employee retention credit. Well, now you can, you just can't use the same period. So if you had your eight week period, we, we can't use payroll for that eight week period to, to qualify for the employee retention credit, but you can have them 
going side to side. It's a little yeah. bit like building spaceships. It's, yeah, like, it is. You know what it's I mean? like a bowl it's of like, spaghetti. For or me. like trying to land on Mars. It's like, all right, at this moment, it will. Mars will be here yeah. if we yeah. launch at this time, right? Like we need Elon on this as well. And saying. we saw that in the beginning of this. I mean, I learned real early on that if they they implement a program like this, that's probably the best thing to say. But just people that went out there and filed, they got money and. Yeah, they not have. I'm gonna yeah. go back to again. Yeah. We did not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We and we are an LLC. Not, I mean, yeah. They did not. They may have not even qualified. A lot of the early somebody. filers got through without. Oh my having, gosh! Yeah, having an oversight. So yeah. We're gonna talk to you after we quit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See if we can't go Turn back. Turn that camera off. <laughs> Shut this shit down. Let's see if we can't even this out. today, it's a moving target. I mean, this this new program that uh, the bill that was passed this past week, the the stimulus bill that Biden signed off on yesterday. Okay, has I'm glad made you brought that up. Changes. Not to just PPP, but has instilled some new grant programs yeah. out there. Yeah. One of the biggest ones is for restaurants. It's called the Restaurant Revitalization Grant. Sweet. So I hope y'all are listening out here. If, you, yeah. if you're a restaurant owner, hey, listen up. No, the banks aren't involved. Sorry, you can't come to us, Bart. But it's through SBA. They're going to release the application in the coming weeks. And this is targeted just to restaurants. Now, what qualifies as a restaurant? A bar, a food truck, a food stand, a brew pub, a saloon. Oh, he's in the notes now, ladies and gents. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Any of that qualifies right there. So it's out there. It's coming. Go to SBA's page, bookmark it, keep in touch with what's going on. You can sign up for their emails and they'll give you updates on certain programs and things like that. So this is one that just, this is hot off the press. Right. It's right ripe. We don't know what's going on with it, but we know money's allocated out there. So if you're a restaurant owner, Keep in touch with what's going on with us. And you got that right here on Brownwater, man. We're not just fart jokes and uh, whiskey. I mean, we got <laughs> real information on this shit. This is real right? stuff. Real life what, stuff. Where you, you mentioned all these SBA programs, and you're familiar with the PPP for sure, but the ones yeah. that you're not so familiar with, would SBA's website be the best place to kind of go there and per- peruse it if you're the, the average Joe or still just kind of contact your CPA and help him be more specific and, and get you into that. Yeah. Is, I is mean, that the advice? If you have a CPA or, or if you don't it, reach get one, it, yeah, yeah. Re, <laughs> reach out to them if because a business mean, owner, you don't have a CPA. Something, yeah. something you better wrong. be a CPA, right? That. At That's least right. we have yeah. recently earned that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You got to keep track of all this shit. <laughs> yeah. Literally. I said that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. anyway, yeah, yeah. back to what you're saying. Half, yeah. half the people probably shut the podcast off when I said depreciation five minutes ago. But, <laughs> 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 But no, yeah, I mean, reach out because I mean, look, we've been in this in it for a year now. And, and I mean, we're dealing with it with, you know, 100, 200, 300 clients. I mean, yeah. so we're forced to to know these things. So, the, yeah, that's that's number one. But but I will give the government credit in the fact that the, the information that they have provided and uploaded on their the different websites, SBA is a big one. I would go to the Department of Treasury. Treasury is Department okay. Of Treasury. That's a good yes. tidbit of information to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's generally my source is the Department of Treasury because they, they have everything. There's fact sheets. Fact sheets are probably your best friend because you're not going and pouring through Correct. 30 pages. You know, it's a que- it, it, somebody's asked a question that you're having right now and it's answered somewhere in there. Um, so that would be my recommendation to Hire like somebody. It. I agree. That's, That's like trust it, the professional. SBA and Treasury are the two yeah. big one, ones. One yeah. thing they talk about in college, is like drinking from a fire hose. That's oh, kind of what yeah. this feels like, right? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. you know, hire hire the professionals to help you sift through it. You know, don't try to do it yourself. Mm, uh, nope. I'm sure 2020 presented a n- numerous challenges for small businesses, medium businesses, and large businesses alone. So reach out to the guys that can help you navigate through this, and uh, we don't want to we don't want to lose any businesses unnecessarily, no, 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 right? Especially not. locally, right? There's that's a good question. Do do we know any victims of this that that you can think of right out the gate? Just it feels like a lot has stayed afloat. Uh, you see it on the news all the time, and it's mostly you know, to be in the food chain and stuff like that who were just yeah. completely shut down. Yeah, we were, I've I've been fortunate. I don't think I've had a customer shut their doors completely. Yeah. They've been They've expressed trouble and right. I know dire, a lot of people cut stress. hours. Yeah, uh, yeah. cut and, days and, and, I, and stuff I think, like Eric, that. I think you mentioned it at the begin beginning of this too. Is like they adapted, they overcame. Right, everybody went digital. Mm-hmm. Right, that's what you we gotta were talking change. about. You got to change. You got to adapt. Yeah. And yep. then COVID accelerated that process. So you either 100%. adapt or die. And in this situation, it's just quicker. I mean, you have to adapt at any point. But this just makes it happen a lot faster. That's yeah. All. Amazon was killing a lot of businesses before COVID oh, yeah. and uh, you can get into the whole out, debate yeah. about big businesses still being open even during COVID and killed the little guy yeah. as well. But 
it's it's if you didn't think digital was important before, oh, yeah. like you said, right. COVID accelerated that times ten. Absolutely. And the little guys need to understand that and they need to get involved. And in it's that. free. If you're not utilizing, what's wrong with you? Yeah. He's talking about social come, media. Yeah. Walking about backwards. Yeah. Digital walking is backwards. free. Yeah. Put a Facebook live video out there. Put a post. Create a business page at minimum, people. That's yeah. the easiest thing you can do. That's right. Come on here, do a podcast. Do, that's right. Yeah, these yeah, gentlemen, that's these right. gentlemen took the time out to do it. And I don't got, have a business. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you're we in just the like to get out drinking. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> so true. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's 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 a lot of good information that I hope people can uh, can appreciate. And again, it is over you know overwhelming feeling. I'm sure for these guys going through all this stuff, but there are people out there who can help. I noticed you got the uh, the list of notes over there. Did we did we hit the high points? Is there again? I told you I'm I'm. This one's uh, hard for me to like to lob the questions up. Just for the because, most part, I you mean, know, I'll mention the shuttered venues operator operators grant. But okay, that, that doesn't apply to a whole lot of people out there. Well, there might be one. So, let's but talk the about ones it. I can think of would be like the Sanger, but that's owned by the city, and like Biloxi Little Theater, but. They have a grants out there for the shuttered venue operators. That means that they will pay you forty five percent of your annual revenue. Yeah, it's a big one. It's 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 huge. So if what, you, what's if, the quality? What would you've got to have fixed seating? So it, it, that's the big problem. It's so like a movie theater, so like a stuff. movie theater, um, a live theater, um, right. a performance venue where you have like bands, amphitheater, amphitheater something those like that. kind of things. Yeah. yeah, that's what this was geared more towards. Mm. But if you applied for this grant, you couldn't apply for PPP. And that's still the case now. That's no, not, that changed. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. I was hoping I was going to yeah. get that, that one. just right. changed really with this recent law. Damn. And they said, hey, you though, can for, now do both. That sucks for somebody who maybe closed their doors. I've got a customer who held out hoping they could apply for this grant. I don't think they qualify, but they've been holding out hope that they can and not applying for a PPP round two. Now this has changed the whole ball game for them, and they're like, "Okay, I can do both. I'm going to go both. ahead. I'm going to go ahead and go with PPP get that round money. two. I get that yeah. money as quickly That's as possible." So, and they need it. They're, yeah. they're one of these places where they're a museum that okay. they're, they're struggling. Okay. So, are people going out and doing those sorts of no. things as much no, as they were no. before? No, absolutely and not. I, and I'm so. hearing chatter about people even with the vaccine rollout. They're still saying they're you know scared, and that's each individual's you know person to make I that decision. I got my vaccine card, and I hope everybody does it because, and that's just a personal opinion of mine. I'm not speaking for the bank or no. for anybody yeah. else. But if you want to get life back to normal, get, get your vaccine rolling. out there. Yeah, yeah, and so that, that goes, we can congregate and we can do the things that we did before this thing happened. That's the easiest path, people. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that goes back to information. People get misinformation. Right. People Absolutely. get scared about things that they shouldn't Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Uh, They're not putting tracking devices in you? I think they are. I think I am being <laughs> tracked right now, but that may be some psychological stuff I need to work through. I don't Remember know if it has anything to do with the vaccine. Kid and it wasn't even your choice. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. We you know we can talk about that at a later time. Absolutely, that's another, that's another topic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Did uh, and that and that's it on the bullet points there because I really don't want to miss anything. Yeah. You know? there, there's some other changes with this recent uh, act, but most of those are are pretty small compared to these. These are the two big programs out there. They they apply to certain industries now qualifying for PPP. There's some other tax implications which Jordan might want to get into, but for the most part, those are the big high points of what happened this past week. Yeah, it, it, I mean, there were a lot of, um, and really people will be interested in because they affected individual taxes a lot um, in, in this. So like I said, the taxability of the unemployment was a big one. Yeah. Um, the stimulus checks, uh, everybody's interested That's in that. That's a big one, yeah. Um, just to touch on the highlights of that, because, I mean, everybody's got a question about that. And that's I do have a question on that. Go ahead. You keep going. I'm it, gonna interrupt you. It's changed 45 times since the beginning of it, too. This this may be a good year to maybe get off of the TurboTax teat and yeah. speak to somebody yeah. who can answer some specific questions, right? Absolutely. Yeah, because with the stimulus checks, just to give you you know the brief synopsis of it, it's fairly similar in structure to the the earlier ones. They've changed the income thresholds a little bit, not really the income threshold, but how it phases out um, with the original, you know, you had 75, you had to make under 75,000 as an individual, I think 112 had a household and 150 married filing joint, but it phased out. You, you could go all the way up to a hundred thousand single and still get some money. And, uh, and then there was a chill, a child, uh, credit in, yeah. in absolutely. And Just it not was, the full amount. It was a different, yeah, it was different. It was 12, five in the first one. And then everybody got 600 in the second one. This one, everybody's going to get $1,400 dependents. Um, the taxpayers, 
and, and they've they've changed the the qualifications for dependency. You know, a lot of people got left out in the cold in that first one because it was a uh, taxpayer spouse and then dependent child that was under 17. Well, a lot of people have kids that are yeah, 17, yeah. 24 going to school where yeah. there was nothing in there at all for them. So they just didn't get That's the money. That's a big gap. Right? That is, yeah, a, big that is gap. a big gap, especially since you can stay on your parents' insurance as long as you're in school to what, 20? Yeah. Six. I, it was, 20, I thought it was six too, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it's 23. Wrong. Or three. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So but, that's. Still. That's in right. college. So Adult yeah. dependents, you know, people caring for. Yeah, yeah disabled. elderly, disabled. Yeah. yeah. They just completely got left out. Um, that's changed that all of that, pretty much any dependents opened up, you're going to get the money, you know, the $1,400. Um, the, the phase out is a little bit different. Like I said, it, it married filing joint, you know, went up to 200. Now you're completely phased out at 160, um, 80,000 for single filers, uh, is the complete phase out, but, um, it's the same operation. It's a, it, you know, it's an advance of a tax credit. See, right now I'm dealing with, um, people that didn't get those first rounds, you know, they, they judged your eligibility on the latest tax return filed. Well, you know, some people had 2018 tax or this happened right in the middle yeah, of the tax yeah, year. So they yep. may have not got their 2019 tax return in or their income may be different. You know, Hey, it, it's a 2020 tax credit. Well, my 2019 income was up and fine because I could go to work and now I can't. So my income's yeah. down. But you can file and get those credit. Anything you missed, if you're now eligible for it in 2020, you get it on your tax return. So you, you don't completely lose out on the money. So file your taxes. But then that's another word of caution too. <laughs> Be careful when you file your taxes. Because, for instance, right now, let's just say, look, we're, we're in a different environment down here than the rest of the nation is, thankfully. Right. We were open up for yeah, a good we're, portion we're, of, you know. Yeah, we're open. Like California, New York, they're locked down. I mean, still locked. California, for sure, still locked down. They're going back to a lockdown, yeah. I believe. Oh, man. Decimated. Don't yeah, get me so, started. Yeah. So we did have, and I'm seeing a lot of our taxpayers that made just as much, if not more, than they did the year before. Well, uh, and this is no secret. I'm not telling you, you know, do a magic trick, but you can look and see if I made, you know, my 2020 income is going to be over the 160, but my 2019 income was really, it was like, you know, 120. Well, you probably don't want to file your taxes in the next couple of weeks yeah. because they're going to qualify it on your 2019 income. If you're 20 tax, that's totally yeah. legal. Uh, yeah. Completely totally legal. legal. Yeah. Completely legal. Yeah. So there's some some so thought in that. That kind of circles back around to what we talked about about extensions. So I'm assuming that a lot of people are going to be filing extensions out of necessity, out of questionability, if that's the right correct word, you know, like wondering what's <laughs> going to happen. Hope. Out of I hope, hope yeah. right? Yeah. Well, but you got both sides of the spectrum too because I, I have taxpayers too that were rushing to get their tax return in because they didn't qualify on their 2019. Uh, so it's, very, it's, 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 it's tax it money back. It's, it's, yeah. it's customer yeah. or person Absolutely. specific. Yeah, yeah. You assess your your personal tax situation. Get with your uh, CPA or whoever you're having file it and uh, and, and make that decision. But there's some thought to be to be had there to make sure that you're getting you know the full amount of what you're getting. Now, you know, good story is. If you if you do miss out on it, it's going to be the same way next year. If if you didn't get it, you shot you should have got it. You'll get it on your 2020, 2021 tax return. So set the way to year you get. Yeah, it. and there's no callback too. That's a big thing. A lot of misconception that people uh, have is oh I don't don't send me that money because you know I, as everybody's experience they've had they're just going to ask for it back at some point. That's not that's not the case here. If you get it and you didn't qualify for it, meh. You got lucky. Damn it! Yeah, it's not, and it's ah, it's not, ta not it's not taxable too. So you're not paying tax on it. So. Sweet, yeah, man, that's okay. But my question is on that: How come some people are getting stimulus checks and some people are having to file their taxes to get, or the stimulus check goes back on their taxes? I think you just covered it a little bit. Yeah. So so it's it's all based on what your income, what what tax return they had on file, right? So if you had 2018 and you were over the the 200,000 married filing joint you didn't get anything well then in 2020 you know we made 150 so now but the credit like I said it's an advance of a 2020 tax credit so all uh, all along they're saying hey we're going to judge this 
on your 2020 tax return. We're just trying to get the money out there to you right now to see who qualifies for it. We're going to use the latest information filed. So if you didn't get it, we'll get it back to you on your tax return. Right. That's kind of how that 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 system works. And I, it's going. I know a lot of people are like, I didn't get no check. They keep telling me to file my taxes. They keep telling me to file my yeah. taxes, and that's why. Absolutely. And that's another thing, too, that I, I will recommend with these checks. If you are going to file your tax return, you know, you have the option to to have a refund direct deposited or uh, paid you know, directly out of the withdrawal ACH out of your uh, checking account. I would recommend maybe not to pay. That's up to you if you want to pay. You know, have them drafted out of your check, but absolutely have your fu- uh, your money direct deposited into your bank account because Passion. those that had it are getting their stimulus checks right. way yeah. so faster. much quicker. Yeah, yeah. And that, that holds true, I think, for tax returns no matter absolutely. what. Anyway, absolutely, so. absolutely. Yeah, if they've got your information, they're going to process it yeah. a lot quicker instead of those paper checks. You're yeah. going to be last. Yeah. You'll on the be to- snail. Mail. You are last on the totem pole. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> if the post office that loser. Right. Oh. <laughs> don't even get me started on that. Yeah, yeah. You got to get with the times on that. People. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, t- that's tough for older people, senior citizens. It is. That, that aren't it is. Digital, you know. The good news is with 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 them, you know, pretty much the, the IRS Department of Treasury um, are going off of anything. So like with the older uh, individuals that maybe didn't, maybe don't even file a tax return now with their, you right. know, their, their uh, income being non-taxable, um, if they were, if they were, uh, on social security and had that money direct deposited, then they got the money. Yeah, so they went through different avenues, but it right. still wasn't perfect. I'm seeing people uh, right now. I mean, we're right in the heat of filing season. Um, multiple people have gotten the letter saying they're getting the money, but they haven't gotten the money. Right. right. So the question is, well, what do I do? Well, Hurry up and wait. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've kind of c- c- come to the conclusion there now that go ahead and file your tax return and get the money back on your tax return instead of having to fight the phone for eight hours. Try calling the IRS right now. <laughs> you, yeah, you're not Good getting luck. through. Good Good luck. Yes. So, yeah. What does it mean when they call you? Yeah, <laughs> is that good or bad? Yeah, probably yeah. want to run. Yeah, yeah that's that's probably not a good thing. Yeah. So, so you. Go ahead and follow your tax return and worry about the stimulus check for a later time. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, get 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 it in there. If if you if you're going to qualify with this year's tax return, like I said, the only reason to really delay it is if you know that you're going to be up and, and lose out yeah. on that benefit. Then I wouldn't. <sighs> My brain. <sighs> Well, hey, look, that's I not, feel better. Ugh. I feel better just sitting right here. That's just number one of. I mean, there's a other tax. They're talking about increasing the child tax credit. That you know, going from two thousand to three thousand, thirty six hundred if the kid's six and under. Part of that, then these are all things that haven't been ironed call an out. Accountant, yes, yes that's sir. Also, where, where does this? Where's this printer? They they keep printing all oh, this look, money. Away. I was. I want to find. I that. was going to ask that. I'm glad Joey <laughs> brought it up. Honestly, like you know, obviously this is going to be an opinion question. I would assume, right? And even though even the top dogs at the treasury don't know, or they maybe they do know. I don't know. Yeah. But like w- w- inflation, like what? Is, uh, that was a deep breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, deep is breath. anybody worried? I'm worried. Uh, yeah, uh, it's got to yeah, come from somewhere. Absolutely. Look, it's in the at the end of the day, it's going to come from us. Yeah, it no, always I does. disagree. I think it's going to come from the grandchildren or the, the yeah, next absolutely. generation. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm you're saying? You're absolutely right. You, when you're saying us, you mean our citizens. Yeah. We're going to have to yeah. pay right. back yeah. one way or another. And right. There's a cost to everything. Well, and, that, and that's why I get the question. You hope things are going to get better, and yeah. when the things are better, we can pay it back, but. I, I get the question. Yeah, we don't have I, a good track record right now. Not right now. Or the stink eye when I when I say things like you know manage your file, you know, maybe push your filing back to get your money. And people are like, oh well, if I don't, you know, if I don't really need, well, look, hey, that's taxpayer dollars you've paid in that money. You're yeah, and if you're eligible for it, don't feel bad and get you're that bargaining money. with your own money. Absolutely, it's yeah. your it's your money, and that's where it's going to come from. It, Inevitably, there are going to be tax increases somewhere. Who it's on, who it affects, nobody knows at this point. But anytime you have a change in administration, you look for that anyway. Yes. Um, but but hey, we're writing checks like this. Essentially, you've got to pay the piper, and, and yeah. it's going to come from the taxpayer dollar. Thankfully, we have a good uh, uh, we have a good infrastructure as far as I don't mean roads and bridges, but I mean like our economy was was pretty good before mm-hmm. roaring, pretty good uh, before COVID hit. We have a lot of things going for us, you know, for the time being. And this is March 12th, 2021. So if you're listening to this 10 years down the road, <laughs> it may not be the biggest GDP in the world yeah. anymore. I don't know. But, you know, we got a lot going for us, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I think we're going to get out of it. 
it's coming around. It's, it's yeah, coming back got, around again. Yeah. These are big, big questions, but yeah, yeah. it's, it's good to talk. People you just hope, us. hey, you just hope and yeah. get back to what we're doing. But right now, get that money. That's right. Yeah, that's that right. Get that true. money. That is true. Get back to work, though, right, Absolutely. if you can. So, for sure. Absolutely. Gentlemen, uh, I really, really appreciate oh. you coming out here yeah, today so and taking your time, time. Great time. To, 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 to talk about this with us and uh, explain it for us laymans here who are trying to trying to figure it out. I would like for you both to to do a personal shout out, like seriously like take the time um we'll start with you jordan like where where can people like, hey man he's on point i feel comfortable with this guy i like what he's saying how can they get in touch with you and and shout your your, your company out again yeah yeah so uh, we'll go to our website um uh pwlcpa.com um pilts williams roast and company is the name of our firm um and real local lo guys local yeah. guys been here since 1952 there we Biloxi. go i mean it, it's a homegrown it absolutely is and, and and i'm i i feel calls every day of people that are not clients of mine that you know need need answers and and look hey what better way for me to show you that you can trust me and Correct. That, that, that i'm going to be beneficial for you to, to call and, and talk yeah. to me um look at, at the end of the day we're we're we live in a small little local town i mean i love it we got plenty everything we need but we're, we we're in this together and yeah. we always have been and yep. we look back at hurricane katrina people helping out their neighbor i mean that that's what we're here for right so if i can anyway help keep somebody's doors open um i've had two or three times where somebody's called me to have their tax return done and i say hey have you done the ppp and before they paid me dollar number one i got them eight ten fifteen thousand dollars i mean can't that's get any awesome. better than that what a, awesome. what a great way to start off a business oh, wow. relationship absolutely. right yeah, absolutely hey here's 10 grand yeah, yeah. thanks guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and i only owe you how much and you made me how much <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. not great with numbers but this that's felt a like a good deal, deal. Right it's there. still yeah. another deal yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's I, I, and that's how i sell myself all the time and i said it earlier on look if, if you're a dentist or a doctor or a, a, a nail own nail salon focus on making money fixing your craft teeth and, your craft yeah i mean don't d leave that to, to, to us you, to professional yeah, that's um, your craft absolutely but so there, there's my plug i love it i yeah. love it eric same same yeah. same to you man uh eric sievers with Bancorp south down here in downtown biloxi uh 760 howard avenue i'm a the SBA liaison for the bank. So naturally, I've transitioned into the PPP program and was right in there from the get go. But I'm a commercial lender as well. That's my trade. That's what I normally do day in and day out. So I, I deal with small business owners anywhere from 10,000 in revenue all the way down to several million. So it, it really doesn't matter. But we're relationship bankers. We yep. deal with your entire relationship. So it's not just your small business account it's your your loan your your, your checking account your if you want to build a house your construction loan uh dealing with your credit card everything package. all in one we're yeah. not we're not piecemealing you out to a different person in every department you have one contact when you're dealing with me Sweet. and i'm the central contact which our customers love so and i get calls on the weekends after hours doesn't matter i'll answer my cell phone i'm not going to give it out right now but <laughs> you become my customer there you go you're, you're gonna earn that yeah. cell phone <laughs> you'll earn it. i'll be happy to call you yeah. and answer those questions for you but uh and I'm also the uh, president of the Biloxi Bay Area Chamber of Commerce as well. We said the yep. chamber earlier. I meant um, to yep. say the full name. Yes. So I'm there until July 1st, and you actually have the president-elect sitting next to you right here. Yes. Oh, okay. He is oh, coming. All right. Oh. Nice, nice. He is coming I'll, in right behind you me. You would have passed the crown over. Absolutely. Yes. And it's you been got a, the treasurer, too. We uh, haven't told you yet. But. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Fool. You want to talk about picking the wrong no. person for something? Holy shit. Yeah. Ah. It was a good run, fellas. We're out. Yeah. It's like they survived COVID. We lost it. Every time. After that, day. what happened? Yeah. They had the nicest cameras in my yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. They talked about going out of business right <laughs> well. Yeah. yeah, we got great stuff, but we yeah. have zero money. <laughs> That's exactly what would happen. So. But it's been great. It's been a very challenging year from the chambers aspect. I bet doing that plus yeah. PPP and, and the bank stuff. It, it's time consuming, but my customers need it. The small business community needs it. Absolutely. And I'm happy to provide that because I know I'm in a situation that is much better yeah. than, than these small business owners. I have a, a guaranteed income. I've got a company that treats me great and I can't speak enough for the position that I'm in. And I know how fortunate I am. So I know how these small business owners are struggling just to make ends meet day after day. So when you put that into perspective, it, it's easy to do what I do for them. And I'm happy to do it. So Absolutely. that's awesome, man. Yep. That really is. Uh, I want to say thanks to everybody that's uh, listened to this. I hope it was valuable information. I feel like there was a lot, a lot going on again. It wasn't just, uh, 
you know, light talk today. There was a lot yeah. going on. So Please, hit call rewind. The professionals. Yeah, hit call rewind. The professionals. <laughs> These guys right here. Not us. No, These guys. definitely not us. <laughs> definitely not us. Um, hit rewind. Listen to it again. You know, look them up. Uh, they dropped all their information there. Go check them out. We appreciate y'all's time and uh, we'll yep. see you on the next one.